That's why it's very critical that all the wiring in the truck, because these things do have a lot of age on them, that all the wiring is checked throughout the vehicle. And a couple of videos back, I also suggested that you get a new wiring harness for the top of the motor. Consider it a performance upgrade. I keep on harping over and over and over again. If you've been following this channel, consider and go out and get yourself a new wiring harness for the engine. Comment after comment after comment. Everybody says the same thing. Jeez, I did what you suggested and the truck runs like brand new. There you have it. Wire harness replacement. Um, talk about this in many, many videos. Consider it a performance upgrade. Now, a lot of comments come through, well, they don't make them for these years anymore. Well, you got to get one that is close as you can for the years that are not available. And basically, take yours off, take the new one, set it down on the table or the ground and follow all the wires up. Add or delete which wires that uh, your engine has or has not. Well, hi, this is Custom Works, and I am Clint Allen. Wiring harnesses. Well, we just had one come through the shop, so I'm going to hit down on a few items here. 2002 F350, regular pickup truck. Come through the shop, had surging idle up and down, up and down, up and down. Did a test on the wires, wiring harness, baked. All the years, once again, that it's been in the truck, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Just damage the wiring, basically. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna breeze over the basics here. Gonna show you how to take apart the 42 pin connector. The two differences, there, there was only from the, cause you can only get the automatic wiring harness for the 2002. So we changed it over to a manual. Only two wires that need to be taken out of your old wiring harness and changed over to the new wiring harness. It's real easy, just like I promised in previous videos. Now I'm gonna make this into a, a playlist and as different model years come in, then we'll hit down on what you need to change. So we'll jump out to the shop and we'll go over the basics of what needed to be changed. So here we've got the unloomed wiring harness off of the 2002. Now we're just talking 2002 right here. As uh, different engines come in that we put different wiring harnesses on, uh, once again, this will be a playlist, and then in the future, everybody will just be able to go and go boom, boom, boom to the playlist, find exactly which one that they have for a year, and just follow this simple tutorial. So, on the 2002 model, pin number 18 is the temperature sensor right here. So, you already have it off, but this is what we need to add to the automatic transmission wiring harness. Then, on the 2002 automatic brand new wiring harness, we're going to have one of these larger pinholes right here, which is for the alternator, specifically that wire right there. Cover that in just a bit. So on here, we it, no matter what, you, you got to cut the wire uh, in order to put it into the new wiring harness. But get that second temperature sensor wire out of there. Um, temperature sensor wires and plugs, just never seen one go bad. So don't be afraid to reuse it. If you want to go through and put brand new wiring in and then, you know, solder it, uh, the wires up 
close to where the sensor plug is and or get a new sensor plug also have at her all right no no big deal um just with uh, in my experience once again it, they just don't have issues so don't be afraid to use the old one and what you're going to do now this this one was because of heat and age is already broke but what what we just simply do is there one two three four that that's what's holding on this back plastic cover just take a small little screwdriver push it on up go to the other side push it on up and make sure that your wires are straight get get them straightened up as much as possible and then go ahead and push this cover back now since this is the old one right here and you're not going to save it anyways just bust it off but You'll be able to have some good practice when you get to the new wiring harness to install that pin number 18. So pry that on up, as simple as that. Like I said, this one was already broke because of age. And you just slowly push it back. Now to uh, on, on the new one and on this one, uh, you can go ahead and use some little diet electrical grease. Uh, get in there and get all the wires full of it so it's easier to slide. And that's going to be more important when we get to this right here. So this is what keeps the moisture and the weather and everything out of this plug. Keeps it from uh, getting the green and crusties. So this is going to be sitting inside. And uh, when I was taking it apart for, for the demonstration, it popped off. But anyways, I know everybody here can get the gist of this. Keep in mind, you got to have that dielectrical grease on here. And you just go inside and you just push this back. Now you're going to have to keep on coming in here and here and here and here and here while you're lifting that up and keep on pushing it back till you're comfortable where you can uh, both install the new pin on your new wiring harness and remove the old pin out of the old wiring harness. Uh, the concept is, is not to take it off completely like I did. But anyways, to get that pin number 18 out of there, and I'm just gonna pick any pin, but right here, you just get in there and pop that up. That comes out. So inside here, and, and you'll probably want to get some extra light. There's there's a little pin that sits that that holds holds it snug in place. And what you'll need to do is push that pin down, that plastic pin down. And as you're holding it down, then pull it on out. As simple as that. The new one, we don't need to worry about that because all you're going to do is just push it in. You'll hear it go click. On the new wiring harness, you're, you're going to have this to contend with. And it's probably going to be pulled out this far right here. So you'll be able to go in. And I know that's not pin 18, but push it in. You'll hear it click. Then you'll run your wire on out through the pin 18 hole and then you slide it this rubber piece right here right back in to where it should be and then you'll have to uh, solder and then of course use some marine style heat shrink tubing so it doesn't corrode over time so that's how we do that one so then what you're going to do is run that sensor wire back through right next to your cam position sensor wire. So just follow the cam position sensor wire all the way through and you're all set with that first modification. Now as another tip right here, when you pull off your old wiring harness, and especially if you don't have a whole lot of automotive experience, mark every one of them with a piece of tape, 
permanent marker of what sensor it came off of. We'll get to that in just a little bit of why. So the next one was on the hole right here. This has a little barrel for the automatic transmission. All I did, uh, all I do there is just simply cut it off. Take that off of there. I remove that wire completely. And that is that second wire. This is the alternator. This plugs into the alternator. And this wire on the old loom for the 2002 has a wire that attaches right here. That's where it attaches. This sits at the battery. And then you just go through if you remove the looming off of the new one and run it back up to where the alternator is and then make your attachment, solder it together, use your uh, marine tubing so it doesn't corrode and basically that mod is done. With this right here on the 2002 since you know since you know now, you could actually leave the looming on the brand new one. Just get yourself that really small looming for the wire for the uh, alternator right here. And just run that looming right alongside this power wire all the way up to where you need to go. Solder it on on here, electrical tape it. So you wouldn't have to actually take the looming off if you don't want. The reason why I take the looming off of both of them is, is because I like to pre-fit it in the motor because you never know what high school, you know, dropout actually put the looming on and sometimes they're hard to get where they need to go. So I like to pre-fit it without the looming on it and then make my tape offs of where I need to of where I'm going to make my bends and stuff like that. I'm also able to push that wiring harness a little bit further back, making it easier in the future to work on other items. We'll get to that in the future, but either which way, that's why I do it that way. If you don't want to remove the looming, that is fine. On the new one, that is, and you can just run this wire right alongside, right up to the battery. As far as the number 18 pin, Heck, you could do the same thing. Just simply go through and get yourself uh, that really small type of looming and just run it alongside. Be done with it. As long as you get down to the cam position sensor area where it was previously at. So uh, be careful because of where it is located that you don't add too much wire. By using the old wire, it kind of limits you on where you need to be. Because if you add too much wiring, eh, you might run into a situation where, well, you've got the belt spinning right there, so you don't want to put it in there and have the belt hit it over time, and then you get a check engine light, and of course, then you're like, oh, what's going on? And you find out that it's a temperature sensor situation. But basically, that is the nub of it. Obviously on the new one, then you just, like I said, push this back in place, clip on the back cover, you're all set to go. So it's as simple as that. So now the reason why I want you to mark every one of these of where they came off of, what sensor they are for, is because if you get yourself a Ford OEM, replacement harness, you're pretty much all set to go. But there are different low cost options out there. Option wiring harnesses. Well, once again, you don't know what the uh, you know high school drop off was making those that day. And that way you can take the new harness and the old harness and go, okay, this is, you know, for this right here, do these connectors and pins line up. 
What you might find is you'll get, without checking, you'll get it installed in the engine. You're like, well, okay, yep, doesn't fit. <laughs> you'll be sitting there going, what the heck's going on? This new wiring harness is supposed to fit. Well, they could have installed the wrong uh, sensor connector. Um, all kinds of things could have gone wrong, so double check those to make sure that they're correct. If you find uh, that you don't have the correct connector, uh, order yourself a pigtail. Go and solder it in place so you have a brand new pigtail in there. Yeah, I know it kind of defeated the purpose, but calling up a company and whining and bitching about it is probably not going to get you very far. And uh, if you do a good solder job and you use the marine shrink tubing, yeah, you're going to be set. You're not going to have any issues anyways. So basically, that is 2002, what needs to be changed. And I hope you've learned something today. And you take it easy and you have a good day. Drive a true workhorse Ford's F-250 or F-350. Get tough with Ford's 7.3 liter power stroke diesel engine. So hard. With the most proven electronic automatic transmission. Stop clean. With standard load sensing rear brakes. Go further. With the most fuel capacity in its class. Buy now. With 1,500 cash back on heavy duty F-250s and 350s. Or 29 APR for 36 months. It's the best offer of the year on all 97 heavy duties. 1,500 back or 29 financing. Only at your Northwest Ford dealer. Woo!